Okay, everybody. So this video has been a while coming. A friend and I had a back and forth about this, and it was actually pretty constructive in the end. And that is, where's all this going? <laughs> Why? Right? Why are we doing this? So, you know, when you get to this level of Enochian, when you're doing this sort of thing, you know, you're, you're really invested. And at first, you know, I know that the, from at least my experience of this, is that you do get a little bit obsessive, and the current of the energy is very powerful, it's very welcoming, um, and it's, it's very affirming. And I've mentioned in earlier podcasts that the angels are pretty flexible when it comes to your own personal beliefs, right? So there's a few issues here, one of which is to watch it to make sure that your own ego doesn't, your own, you're not just doing this for your own ego, right? And that's the thing to always be questioning. So, and that's good, you know, let's do it. Let's, let's check that. And the only way to really check that is with friends. So, which is why I'm particularly open to friends giving me feedback. So the real question is then, okay, you have to confront then, you have to confront what's being raised. And so why? Why do Enochian? And why specifically am I recommending this path? So one of the things to bear in mind with Enochian is that we're getting all types of people coming at this because it has a very strong reputation in the magical community of being very powerful, very effective. And so it's very easy to get lost in the results. And even somebody who was as messed up as Aleister Crowley really recommended not lusting after results, right? So what are the, or, or better yet, why, why go after this at all? right? If it's not results per se, although obviously we want to do things that are effective, we don't want to just waste our time. But if it's not tangible results per se, what are we doing? Right? So if you don't understand why I point you towards wisdom, I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to tell you. If you don't understand that not seeking wisdom is by definition foolish, I'm very sorry. Keep uh, Maybe reflect on foolish choices. Obviously, we can learn from everything, but there are some foolish choices that we never recover from, right? And it's easy to overlook the positive consequences or the non-negative consequences of being wise. So that's the first thing. The other part I will say of this, and I'm really drawing on my Buddhist background here in pairing these two, is that if you are not compassionate, then you are by definition falling into that ego trap that I mentioned earlier. So, and I'm just going to, I'll stick with Buddhism for a second here. Compassion and wisdom in that tradition, they feed on each other, Right? One, the more compassionate you are, the more you're realizing, oh, I want my compassion to be effective. And the wiser you get, the more you realize that it's not just about you. You need to actually worry about, not worry, but concern yourself with yourself, but also with an eye towards other people and trying to develop good, harmonious things and seek goals that actually raise everybody up, including yourself and planning and all of that sort of thing. So, so why am I f recommending this particular path in Enochian? The reason why is that, so let me back up. <laughs> so how did I get here, right? How did I get here? Why am I recommending this? That's probably a better way of emphasizing this, right? Who am I to have done all this? Well, I'm just somebody, so I can only present myself and my um, experiences. 
So I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian household. And there have been there have been a lot of times in which I have really had to deal with a lot of the trauma of that. Right. So I try to I try to explain it and one of the things is that you don't grow up with a lot of confidence in your own thoughts necessarily, or let's put it this way, your thoughts in terms of like the big picture. And that's not a good way to be. You don't know how to think for yourself very well. So I had to learn how to do all of that from scratch. And that is that is terrifying in a lot of ways, right? I had a lot to fall back on and I had... I was way more fortunate than other people um, in terms of like good friends and, you know, maybe a more, a wider variety of experiences than to some of the much more insulated fundamentalist communities. But that was really hard um, nonetheless, because you're dealing with a family member and a family dynamic that is driven by one person's ultra desire for clarity and an inflexibility of approach. So, so that's really hard, especially when, you know, you are a relatively um, sunny, optimistic person. It makes you prone to sadness and depression and all of the things that you know, maybe there's a biological comp component and all of that, but even, but when you're faced with those things, you want to have a belief and a confidence in finding a way out. And you want to have a good system where you can rely on family members to take you through the whole thing. And I didn't get that. I, what I was told is that, you know, that's, that's human wisdom. That's not God's wisdom, which is just like, okay, you know, what do you do with that when God has clearly laid out whole networks of people who have taken their time and devoted their energies and hearts towards studying this? So for me, what did, what form did that take? It took a lot of suicidal ideation, it, it, the form of that. It took a, the form of a lot of depression when I was younger. And as I started to break free from that, I really had to take a look at everything and really try to build up a sense of what reality is from the ground up. And I was open to everything. I really, and that was, looking back, that was probably more courageous than I realized. And especially since I really didn't have as much exposure to the sorts of normal social activities. I mean, let's face it. But I went out and I got those, right? And I made my mistakes. And at times it was pretty painful. Eventually, you know, I got in situations where, of course, you know, you know, addiction, addictive personalities in my family, you know, not addictive. Well, yeah, addictive personalities or addictive tendencies, they cropped up. And so for a little while, I had a drinking problem. You know, it's been 12 years now since I've had a drink. So you know, whatever, it's over. Um, rational recovery worked for me in case you're not an AA person. Ironically, I didn't do AA despite my focus on Enochian and God and all of that. Um, so for me, where did this leave me? And why did I even get into Enochian in the first place? Obviously, I was a magician and Enochian had that reputation. And the more I got into it and the more I still worked through a lot. And I'm not talking just like, oh, back then. I'm talking about just an ongoing process that developed and led me to feel confident enough to like give videos about this and stuff like that. What this led me to was stripping away a lot of, and I, I emphasize this, false narratives, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, for somebody like me, my personality, what, what I grew up with, that's pretty important. Um, but I think that's important for everybody. And so what do I mean by false narratives? I mean by false narratives, the armoring of the heart. If your heart is not soft and compassionate towards other people, and if your mind gets in this state where 
you're not bending to, to, A, towards wisdom, and B, in response to what's happening to you, it's not a healthy place to be. It's just not. Psychological health is really defined by resilience and ability to bounce, to reform a normal state in response to trauma, something coming in and deforming you, right? So why though? Why emphasize the heart? Why am I telling you to do this? Why am I going through all of this process? Who cares? Well, that's a good that that that's the key word, right? Caring. So when you do this, when you work on your own heart, when you focus on compassion and wisdom, what are you doing? First and foremost, you are following God's commandment to love, love your neighbor as yourself, and also love God. Now, I know that there are a lot of different people from different beliefs in here who immediately have shut it off. That's okay, I don't mind. Um, me personally, I think that God is everywhere. God is everyone. I don't care if that's your belief or not. You know, you don't have whatever, whatever, like, model you choose to have, that's fine with me. I think becoming a more loving person, by definition, you're also, you're also plugging into this universal love or this principle of love. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't, it's not that, you know, I don't care what I believe. I just, I don't care as much what you believe. I care that the principle of love is moving through you, that you are both, that you are receptive enough to that principle that you are better at giving and receiving love. That being said, getting into Enochian for myself, I am I'm particularly emphasizing the Aethers because it was through that process that I was able to I'm not saying I was not loving. I was. and But I think the Aethers really stripped away everything that was not in line with this clear mind that allows the fullness and richness of love and, and unity and compassion and wisdom, all of those things. It allowed the arising or the, the stripping away of everything that was not that clear mind when you maintain it, that allows you to be connected with everybody else and everything else and the universe as a whole, right? And there's a whole bunch of knock-on effects. I mentioned the rainbow body sort of in passing, but that's actually a really fucking big deal. <laughs> um... So, okay. So for me, I'll just speak about what that experience is to me. And you can take it or leave it. I'm not here to, I'm not here to, to tell you what or how to believe. I'm trying to show you a way of being that for me, Enochian really opened up and allowed and expanded, right? So yeah, leaving leaving fundamentalist Christianity for a while there, I wasn't even, I didn't identify as a Christian per se. I'm more comfortable with that um, label now, just realizing that other people have taken it and really twisted and perverted it. I don't belong to a church. Um, and obviously I, I maintain a dual practice. So probably, you know, there's a lot of people, there's one person in particular who is, trying to tell me how, how I really ought to believe and how I don't know the cosmologies. It's like, dude, I get it. Okay. If, if that's the, if that's the, the hill you're going to die on, just, just don't. And I, I had to mute him cause he was just, he was just being really negative. And, um, and it was sad, you know, having to do that. I don't like doing that, but people come at me. What can I say? Mars in the ninth. So, 
Okay. So for me, what does this ultimately lead to? So I talk about the universal principle of love. I like, you know, I'm, I'm the, having gone through the whole process of undoing a paradigm and redoing it, <laughs> like that's no big deal. Um, what have I landed on? Because why not? Let's just cut to the chase here, right? Uh, I think that as a human being, it's really important to love and be loving. At the very top of the ensigns of creation, there's Venus, planet of love. What's that phrase? Love conquers all. Okay. So it's a good place to be for yourself, even in the midst of suffering, maybe even especially in the midst of suffering and really hard times. It's important. And I think that when you get into Enochian, if you're dealing with spirits, you know, I, I talk about this all the time. The, the world of spirit is so vast. So you have choices to make, you know? What choices are those? Are you gonna go with, with, with entities that, you know, aren't building you up, aren't teaching you wisdom, aren't giving you a good place to go? Or are you gonna focus on, just like, just like in the mundane life, your own mind, right? Are you going to focus on, on the bad, the negative, or the, the pointless? Or are you going to really seek something higher, for lack of a better term, or better, for lack of a better term? Something that grows you is probably the best term. That's important. So going through this whole process, just finally putting a fine point on it, I'm taking you through a process of Enochian that helps open the heart to something that's always been there. What is that? The pure simplicity of being yourself as you are, spiritually naked as part of this wonderful universe, neither more nor less. And yes, we have the potential to grow, and that is part of us, and that is something we also stand naked in. And in so doing, we can... We can always be close to God. Because we're never apart. We're always one with God. All it is one. And... And that's something that's easy to forget, but for God, it's, he doesn't forget, you know, he's universal. And so for me, that's what the whole point is. Learning to love, opening your heart, softening yourself so that you can, whatever name you want to put on it, some people are more comfortable with the universe and whatever, a lot of words that we have, they're just the society and, and ads and televangelists and all that. They've really, in my view, corrupted what is really very simply and easily there. A God, a divine force that you can both experience really directly in Enochian. But there are so many paths that you can do this in. The still small voice, prayer, allowing, keeping your, you know, keeping your mind quiet, meditation, you get very, very close. Not so much that you're never not close, but your awareness gets much closer to what is always there. A profound, profound loving principle, loving universality for that, for lack of a better term, that is God. And if you don't believe that, that's your call. It's what I believe. It's what I've experienced. All right.
So 20 minutes is my limit. My love to you all. God is always available. Always. Even in the midst of it all. So the problem is, is that we have very human reactions that serve us very well as a general principle to keep us alive, but that we also have the opportunity at any given moment to detach from. So whether it's Enochian, if you're, if you're very big into Enochian, give yourself uh, permission once in a while to do a simpler version of reaching out to God. It's something I do a lot. Um, not as often as I should. What can I tell you? <laughs> but give yourself permission to do that. But this is really mainly because I know Enochian. A lot of people are drawn to it. I wanted to give my own take. And to really explain where I'm coming from. Everything that I'm covering is covered in the John D. Diaries. And... So there's no real complaint, I think, except when I'm explicitly saying this is not in the diaries, that, oh, this is not Enochian, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I did want to put this out there because I'm emphasizing certain parts, and it's probably long past due that I explain why, and also to let you know there are alternatives and to actively say that I do use alternatives to this big, heavy, complicated system. Sometimes life isn't like that. And we need to honor both the simple and complex. Just honor, you know? Honor, try to be still. Just enjoy this beautiful existence in creation, okay? And not just when it's easy, but when it's hard. And not just hard, but when it's easy too. Learn to enjoy. And, well, I guess that's all I have. All right. Love you all. Talk to you next time. And when we get into, now that we're getting into this, I've given you the tools of, you know, as many tools as I can think of. I'm, uh, it, it, it was a good time to pause and to give this video on the why of Enochian uh, in particular, and to also let you know this is not the only thing you need to do. And it's good along the way to pause, remember stuff like therapy, stuff like just enjoying and allowing, appreciating the simple. These are all things that are always available to you. Don't lose sight of that, okay? The one thing about Enochian is that sometimes... You can, can, you can get convinced that it's the only picture. And it's not. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, and it's extraordinarily compelling. I don't want to say it makes you compel obsessive compulsive, but it does, it is very uh, compelling. It does provide a very compelling picture that nonetheless, I don't think the angels want us to get completely lost and they're going to bring that that very high energy okay but remember you are also human and remember that a, a frame in which you look at the world can also be a prison so the more frames you bring in the less you're in prison right give yourself freedom this is the if you're doing this level of magic boy do i have to tell you you really need to to develop some flexibility okay all right. Love you all. Talk to you later. Bye.